super friends and welcome to DC TV Talk. This is the show where we talk all things Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow and Black Lightning. In today's video I'm going to be doing my slightly late review for Arrow 615, otherwise entitled Doppelganger. So let's get into the review. I was extremely excited going into this episode because this episode was advertised as being the return of one of my favourite characters in the history of Arrow, that being Roy Harper slash Arsenal. And that is what we got in this episode. We also knew that Speedy, you know, Thea Queen, she was going to be suiting up as Speedy once again for the first time since, I believe, uh, Season 5. So that was a very exciting thing also. And we got a lot out of this episode and I was not disappointed. The episode starts out with Oliver's case, you know, the, the case that the FBI has been building towards him. It can actually be lifted due to the fact that all the evidence that was played towards him, such as the video surveillance and the photoshopped uh, photo of him, all came from Caden James, who of course turned out to be a criminal, so all of this evidence was conceived illegitimate. And the case towards Rene Ramirez was also kind of in the water. So this meant that the lawyer, who has been around for a long time on Arrow, uh, I believe she was Moira Queen's uh, defense attorney, uh, she basically said to Oliver, look, I can lift your case. All the evidence against you is completely irrelevant now that Caden James is dead and is confirmed to be a criminal. So your case, the FBI really have no evidence against you. So this was an interesting play and something I didn't actually expect. I didn't expect them to bring this storyline back up because I thought this storyline was just dead in the water. I thought it was gone. They were not going to bring it up again. But they have brought it back with an interesting development. So I have to give credit there. Now, at the end of episode 14, we saw Black Siren escape the grasp of Dinah Drake and explain to a fellow Star City citizen that she was Laurel Lance, basically inferring that she is going to be taking up the role of Earth One Laurel Lance. And in this episode, we get a bit more of that. She walks into the police precinct and goes into all the, all the cameras and all the press and explains that she, you know, she was kidnapped for two years and, you know, she's basically acting as Earth One Laurel. She's saying, no, I, I didn't die. I was, Damien Darkey killed me, but then he actually faked my death and I've been captured for two years. Then Oliver comes in and she starts calling him Ollie and, you know, she starts hugging him and then uh, Quinton walks in, she calls him daddy and she runs over to him, basically pretending that she is Earth One Laurel. And this is something I expected going into it. And this develops more as the episode goes on too. Now, one thing I really like about this episode is obviously Roy Harper did come back this episode. And when we first see sort of Roy and where he's being taken, we see he's in this hotel. And Oliver and Diggle, they do a little recon mission where they go and just see where they can get in, where's the best access point. And Diggle basically says to Oliver, look, this is really dangerous, you can't go in there now. And even though they don't go through with this plan, Oliver, I really like what he says because he goes on this whole thing where he says, you know, Roy, he sacrificed himself for me. He went out in the hood, you know, he, he, he sacrificed himself for, for Oliver and I've always loved the mutual respect between Oliver and Roy and you got to see that come through again you know Oliver he wants to he feels he owes Roy and I like that and the way it ties back into season three in that way was really really cool and I really enjoyed that element now another storyline they brought back into this episode which I did not expect because again I thought they just kind of forgot about this was Diggle as the Green Arrow and obviously at the start of the season Oliver said look William doesn't want me to be the Green Arrow so I'm not going to I'm doing it for my son Diggle you can do it so Diggle became the Green Arrow for a few episodes and it turns out that Diggle actually wants to be the Green Arrow he wants the mantle back and he says to Oliver look you know when are you sort of gonna quit again or are you just gonna stick around and he mentions it to Felicity and he, Felicity mentions it to Oliver again and it's interesting, I didn't really expect them to go down the route of, oh, Diggle wants to be the Green Arrow. I just I didn't really expect it. Will Diggle actually become the Green Arrow again? If they've sort of mentioned it here, I guess so. But I don't really know where it's going to go. Because also, again, I feel Diggle may die this season. So I, I don't know where this storyline is going to come back into play. But it was interesting to be brought back up again. And I totally didn't expect it. Anatoly Kanaisev also makes an appearance in this episode and he was very good. I mean, David Nichol is so good in this role. He's just really great. He's so entertaining and he just, he has some really good moments too, especially there's a moment where uh, he's talking with Black Siren and he's just going on this monologue about, you know, how he's, how he like, he basically, even though he knows that Ricardo Diaz kind of screwed him over, he's only in Star City for two reasons. One, to get revenge on Oliver and also for money and Ricardo Diaz can get him both of those things. So he's just sticking with him, even though he knows he's not really doing the best thing. And Ricardo Diaz perhaps is going to screw him over and already ha kind of has. He's saying he can help me achieve the two things I'm here to do. And then obviously he does kind of go on this whole thing where the Bratva kind of cast him out. So he's 
kind of in this plausible deniability thing. It, it's an interesting place to put Anatoly. I think it's a kind of interesting place to put him in this season, considering where he left off in season five. So I like where he's going, and David Nichols definitely gave a fantastic performance as always. Now, new team Arrow has been a bit, you know, hit or miss, depending on the person you ask, uh, re regarding this season, especially recently. And um, we didn't get too much of them. Dinah was in a bit, quite a bit of this episode, but I'll get into her in a second. Uh, Curtis was in this episode for one moment. And to be fair, I really like this moment. It's, it's literally about 15, 20 seconds of a scene where Curtis goes over to Renee's house to basically talk to his daughter about, you know, Renee being in hospital and being transferred to another city. And you don't actually see this conversation. It's like, it's literally 20 seconds where he comes in and says, you know, I need to talk to you about your dad. And that's basically, and it doesn't go any further than that. But it was a nice little moment just to show that Curtis does care for Renee's daughter and things. It was just a nice little moment. And it, Curtis wasn't annoying, so there you go. And speaking of not being too annoying, um, Dinah was actually not too bad this week. She did have a couple of moments where you're just going, just shut up, you know? Like, it's just, no. And I even like how Oliver in this episode just was having enough of her as well at this point. He's just like, you know, you don't trust me and I don't trust you. Don't, go, don't just don't follow me. And like, you know, even when... Uh, he, at the start of the episode where he comes across her and Dine is just like don't talk to me and Oliver's just like okay like it's just it's, it's a you know I like the fact that Oliver's just not even caring anymore about her but she wasn't too bad in this episode especially in comparison to like, the last couple of weeks and yeah although she's not great again nothing against Juliana Harkavy I think she's really good in the role I really like her it's just the writing for this character has been atrocious over the past few weeks but this week was not the worst she's ever been so I guess that's something now, one of the big advertised things going into this episode was Thea Queen suiting up again as Speedy. And she comes out of retirement in full force. Of course, she's motivated by, the, motivated by the fact that Roy is back in Star City and he's in danger. And we get a fantastic fight scene um, where Thea basically teams up with, uh, with the Green Arrow and Spartan. She goes out there and she does some fighting and it's great. It's awesome. Like, I didn't actually realize how much I missed Speedy in action until, you know, I had it again. I didn't realize uh, how good she was and how entertaining it was. And this action scene where she's fighting a Speedy was a much better than anything we had in season four. It was really cool stuff. I really enjoyed her. And again, she, I just, I think even though Thea could be leaving the show, I feel like it's just something that I needed. And I'm glad I got to see it some really good action with Speedy uh, in this season before she potentially goes away because season 4 left much to be desired in terms of Speedy. Uh, also in the same scene um, we get to see Oliver use a new arrow which we've never seen before which is a firework arrow that was very interesting. Um, it was cool you know we haven't really seen him use the firework arrow before so it was just one of those funny comic book moments where like oh there we go so that was always quite fun uh, and it was an interesting little moment and definitely one that provided a lot of laughs too. Now, let's talk about Roy Harper. Roy has got to be one of my favourite characters in Arrow. I just think he's so fantastic. I love the arc he went through from season 1 to 3. And the way his storyline ended, like I say, you just have so much respect for Roy by the end of season 3 just because of what he did. You know, because he did put on the hood and basically say, I'm the Green Arrow, not Oliver. You know, arrest me. And then he faked his death and he's been living undercover for a few years. I really like Roy's character a lot. And... I've really missed him on the show ever since he's, you know, no longer been a full-time cast member. But he was so good in this episode. Now, I will say he wasn't in the episode as much as I thought he was going to be, based on how this episode was, you know, advertised as, oh, it's the return of Roy Harper and, like, the return of Speedy. I thought he was going to be in it a lot more. Like, he doesn't really speak that much uh, in the episode. But when he is in it and when he is speaking, getting some dialogue scenes, Colton Haynes is fantastic. Uh, he is going to be in next week's episode as well, or not next week's episode, um, just the next episode because Arrow's on like a two week break now, or three week break or something. Um, but the next episode, episode 16, Roy will be in it in a new suit it seems like, uh, a more comic book accurate suit, which I saw Colton Haynes talking about a couple weeks ago. Um, but Roy, he was fantastic in this episode, and I really enjoyed his interactions with Thea, that was really cool. Again, his interactions with Oliver was really nice, although it limited, it was still cool. And I'm just so happy to have Roy back on the show, even if it's for a little while, and even if it could be potentially the last time we ever see him. It's just nice to get a final little moment, final little arc with Roy to end off his, his own character arc on the show. Now, I also really want to talk about Ricardo Diaz. Now, Ricardo Diaz is, of course, the main big bad of the season. He is the Arrowverse interpretation of Richard Dragon and Ricardo Diaz from the comics. And he was 
phenomenal in this episode. Kirk Acevedo, who plays him, you know, he's really getting to shine now. Um, we kind of saw in episode 13 that he was going to become the main villain. He wasn't really in 14, because obviously 14 had his own story going on. But he really got to shine here. He's actually the reason Roy Harper got captured. You know, he takes Roy um, as a pressure point for Oliver. So basically, he's going to torture him to get Roy to testify against Oliver. Because basically, Ricardo Diaz, he knows everything about Oliver. He knows about Roy. He knows about the, the uh, fake death. He knows about all of that stuff. So he's basically saying, he's just torturing Roy and saying, look, I'll let you go if you just testify against Oliver. And, uh, but he won't, because obviously Roy has so much respect for Oliver in that regard. And, uh, but Ricardo Diaz, he was so good. He's so powerful. He's got such a great screen presence. He's quite funny. He's over the top, but in a very effective way, in a way that only Arrow can do. And to be honest, based on this one episode, he could be rivaling Adrian Chase here as a in terms of the villain like obviously you guys know how much i loved adrian chase prometheus last last season you know he's one of my favorite characters on arrow and i think he's the best villain in the arrowverse i mean well reverse flash maybe bordering it a little bit but he's definitely one of the best ones but i feel if he keeps going like this ricardo diaz could be one of the biggest and best villains we've ever seen on arrow and he just has so much energy and so much screen presence i really enjoyed what he had to offer in this episode and like I said, if it keeps going like this, I think we're going to be in for a fantastic villain for season 6. Now, a big question going on following this episode is which side is Black Siren truly on? Because she's kind of working with Oliver and Team Arrow, but then she's also working for Ricardo Diaz. And partway through this episode, you kind of think, oh, she's definitely working with Team, with team Arrow. You know, she's like, she's, she basically told them everything about Ricardo Diaz's operation and where he was operating out of, where Roy was. She told them all that. But then at the very end of the episode, Oliver comes to visit her, they have a little discussion, Oliver leaves, and then she gets a text from Ricardo Diaz saying, good job. So, I, it's it's very difficult to pinpoint what her motivations are, um, and I believe that this is left intentionally ambiguous, so you the writers can kind of just play this as it goes along. Um, it's interesting, I feel personally that Black Siren just could be playing both sides until it gets to like, you know, the finale or whatever, and she has to make a choice, and then she will inevitably uh, team with Green Arrow. I feel that's where this is going to go, she's just going to play both sides, because that way she can be covered on both sides, but then when it comes to it, she will join, and she will take a good stance against Ricardo Diaz, and then where she goes from there, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I feel this is, this is intentionally ambiguous, just so the writers can, you know, just pretty much make it up as they go along. There is also a great little discussion between Oliver and Thea, which is kind of a scene we have never had in a long time. You know, this kind of brother-sister adv advice uh, talk scene, which was really nice. Um, but he basically explains to her, look, if you're unhappy without Roy, just go with him. You know, you can just leave. You know, it's not like you need to be here. If you want to be with Roy, then you be with Roy. You deserve to be happy, you know. And this is you know, definitely a setup, I think, for Thea leaving the show. We all kind of know that Willa Holland has left the show and that Thea's leaving, and most likely, you know, Colton Haynes will be leaving with her. So this gives them the perfect window of opportunity to say, right, Roy and Thea can just leave together, have a happy ending, and that will be that. So I feel this is kind of like a setup for that, and I reckon we'll see that at the end of the next episode. We'll see Thea leave with Roy, and that'll be the last time we see him on the show. I mean, this does, as long as none of them die, this does leave them to return you know we could get them back in the crossovers or something uh, but it'd be really nice to see them uh, just have that happy ending because i think they're one of the best arrowverse couples what about that final end scene though we see thea and roy go back to thea's apartment and they uh, begin to get to the love making and uh, we see a shadowy figure who appears to be in league of assassins gear um watching over them quite creepily and uh, this is a setup for episode 16 which is the uh, I can't pronounce the name and I can't remember it off the top of my head, it's the Thanatos or something guild. Um, you know, if you're into this stuff, you, you know what I mean. And uh, it basically means the death guild, and it seems like this is going to be a kind of subdivision of the League of Assassins who are trying to perhaps um, rebuild the League of Assassins after it was disbanded in season 4. And I feel like what's going to happen here is they're going to go after Thea because they need her DNA to perhaps somehow connect back to Malcolm Merlin because she is supposed to be the next Ra's al Ghul because the f the last official Ra's al Ghul was her father Malcolm Merlin and of course Thea is Malcolm's daughter so it's kind of this thing where uh, she is kind of you know the next in line so that's where this is going 
could this lead to something else? Well, I've actually got a video coming up on that, so stay tuned for that. But um, I feel that this is going to lead to a potentially very important storyline. And this could be very interesting going forward. So what did you guys think of the episode Doppelganger? Tell me in the comment section below what you liked, what you didn't. Let's get a discussion going about this episode. I think this was a very, very strong episode of Arrow. Potentially my favourite episode of the season. And this could be biased because I absolutely love Roy Harper. But I genuinely think this is one of the best episodes we've had all season. Kind of going along with episode 13 and like the Deathstroke episodes. These are like, this is one of the top tier of the season. And like I said, arguably the best. This was a very strong episode of Arrow. We had so many great character moments. Ricardo Diaz was fantastic. Thea was great. Roy having him back on the show is awesome. And that end scene was great. So it's just there's so much stuff going on in this episode. They even brought back some storylines that I thought were dead. And I think this is one of the strongest episodes of Arrow this season. And I just couldn't have enjoyed it enough. I can't wait to watch it again. So thank you guys for watching this episode of DC TV Talk. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. It'll help me out a lot. And share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves DC TV and get them to join the community. And as always, guys, please subscribe for all of your latest content on Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, and Black Lightning. And with all that said, guys, I hope to see you again in my next video.